since lockdown started, I've been working out every morning apart from weekends. And I decided to treat myself to some decent dumbbells with a stand. Well, that stand was absolutely rubbish. If you go on Amazon and find any dumbbells with a plastic stand, I've not seen any good reviews for any of those, but the weights are decent. So before any of us had an accident, I decided to make one myself. So keep on watching. So first things first, if you don't have a flimsy dumbbell tree to draw around, don't worry. I've drawn around it for you on paper, which you can download for free as PDF plans from my blog post link below. So assuming you've done that and cut it out, I then found a 12 millimeter thick offcut of plywood big enough for me to draw around the dumbbell rack twice. And there's various ways you could cut this. I can't mind to saw horses and cut the first one out with a jigsaw, but if you've got a scroll saw, a bandsaw, or a CNC machine, even better. If you don't like power tools, then a handsaw for larger areas and cutting with a coping saw for the tricky bits would work too. Now, a jigsaw isn't the most accurate, so I cut the first one as best as I could, then filed any areas I wasn't happy with. Oh, and it's a good idea to check if your dumbbell handles fit okay as well and aren't too tight. But for the second one to match, I'll be using my router with a flush trim router bit. And that means I'm cutting a second face for my dumbbell tree just outside the pencil line, which is quicker, leaving a little bit of excess to trim off with the router flush trim bit. But first I blue tack the two pieces together to take any possible movement out. And for those that live outside of the UK, blue tack is a little bit like a firm chewing gum, which is usually used to put posters on the wall. Then I also clamped it together onto the sawhorses. But here's a quick glance of the flush trim bit that I used with a bearing at the bottom. The silver bearing runs along the good copy, then trims the excess off from the slightly larger one. I know router bits can be a bit of a minefield, so I'll leave an Amazon link to it below, but I've used this several times for my palm router. Mine takes a quarter of an inch, you can buy half an inch ones too, and it comes as part of a set. So the bottom straight edge is all lined up perfectly, no need to shave anything off there, and I'm running along the sides from the left to the right to match the bottom one. If you don't have a router, you could jigsaw both, blue tack, and then rasp it all, or barrel sand it. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect for personal use, and you don't notice how it's not symmetrical when the dumbbells are on anyway. Then I suspected I'd need to round off the sharp edges because the dumbbell's handles are curved slightly. So back to the router again, but this time using a round over bit from the same set. Plus, I didn't want it to dig into my fingers when I picked them up and put them back. I didn't round to the bottom though, as I planned to put a base on it. And with me using scruffy offcuts, I sanded everywhere with 120 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander. So now we've got the front and the back sorted, it was time to give it some bones, if you like. For this, again, more offcuts, but I used some CLS structural timber I made five cuts with a mitre saw about 65 millimeter long. Just bear in mind that the smaller dumbbells that you have have a shorter handle length and gave it a little bit of clearance. And after removing the blue tack, I quickly wrote on each of them which was the back because they're not actually symmetrical. That's the downfall of using a jigsaw, but they are exact copies of each other, so I needed to make sure that they were the correct way. And now I'm really scraping the barrel for wood glue and it was gonna carry a lot of weight and I wanted to make sure this was robust. And the old using a stick to get to the bottom of the bottle worked a treat. And I lined three at the bottom, eyeballing them to be as even as possible and screwed them down with an impact driver. I wanted to make the bottom ones flush because those blocks will also attach to the base. Then did the same with the upper two middle ones. I didn't want to add loads of screws though, but I didn't know whether I was going to fill them and paint them or oil it. And repeated for the back. Ooh, that was feisty. Now I don't think the base was really necessary, but I can be clumsy and my dog hands can certainly be lively. So I hand sawed another rough cut giving it a nice lip, sanded it and rounded the edges off again. And finally, I lined the base up evenly, 
checking all around with a combination square, made some quick pencil references so I could then glue it and line them up with those pencil lines. And I added two screws per block from the bottom. And now it is much stronger than that plastic one that these dumbbells came with. Well, I am sure there's a business idea in this somewhere because I've needed one. But anyway, if you want to make one yourself, don't forget the free plans are in my blog post link below. Anyway, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.